Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian. In today's video, we'll be going over some examples of evaluating exponential expressions. These problems are pretty much taken from the seventh edition of James Stewart's Early Transcendentals Calculus textbook. I've slightly changed all but the last problem. You can read a little bit more about these problems and that textbook down in the description. But suffice to say, even if you're not doing calculus yet, these are important skills to have to be able to do calculus, and that's why they're in the book. But as thrilling as it is to talk about textbooks, let's get into the examples and do some fun math instead. We have six examples we're going to go through today, and as always, I strongly recommend that you try to solve each problem before looking at the solution. By trying to solve the problem, you'll either solve it or you'll have a better idea about what you don't know. And so that's going to make the solutions a lot more helpful. So just give them each a try, maybe a minute each, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you've got time for, and then watch the solution. All right, so hopefully you've given this one a shot. Let's go through the solution. All you've got to know for this first one is what an exponent means. So negative two to the power of four is equal to this. Negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. Of course, we've got four negative twos because we had an exponent of four. So then we just have to do the multiplication. Negative two times negative two is positive four. So then we have positive four times negative two times negative two. Four times negative two is negative eight. So we have negative eight times negative two. Negative eight times negative two is positive 16. So negative two to the power of four is equal to positive 16. These parentheses in this expression are very important and we're going to see why exactly they're important right now. So this exercise is very similar to the last one, except now we don't have parentheses around the negative two. So what does that mean? Well, for starters, we know that this is equal to negative one times two to the power of four. This is really what this expression is. And we know that in the order of operations, we have to evaluate exponents first. So we need to calculate two to the power of four and then multiply that by negative one. So before we just had negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. Now we need negative one times two times two times two times two. So this is equal to negative one times two times two times two times two. And now that we've written out this exponent as multiplication, we can multiply things in whatever order we please. But the important thing to notice here is that negative one is not being raised to the power of four. Only two is being raised to the power of four. Whereas in the previous problem, negative two was being raised to the power of four. So now we just gotta do some multiplication. Negative one times two is negative two. Negative two times positive two is negative four. Negative four times positive two is negative eight. Negative eight times positive two is negative 16. So our final answer is negative 16. So two to the power of four times negative one is negative 16. And the difference between these two problems is an important thing to keep in mind when you're using a calculator because it's very easy to punch this into a calculator when you mean to be punching in this. And most calculators will give you two different answers for those expressions. All right, now we have two to the power of negative four. All we have to remember for this one is that a to the power of negative b is equal to one over a to the power of b. So two to the power of four, that's equal to one over two to the power of four. We know that two to the power of four is equal to 16. So this is just equal to one over 16. So two to the power of negative four is one over 16. All right, next problem. Here's a fun one. This problem could be really disgusting if we didn't know our exponent rules. For this, just remember that a to the power of b divided by a to the power of c is equal to a to the power of b minus c. So four to the power of 33 over four to the power of 30 is equal to four to the power of 33 minus 30. That's equal to four to the power of three and that is equal to 64. All right, here's the next one, three over five all to the power of negative two. Now for starters, if we have a fraction to a negative exponent, so let's say we have a over b to the power of negative c, that is equal to b over a 
to the power of positive c. And this is just a result of the usual negative exponent rule that you're used to. So, doing this problem, we can rewrite this as 5 over 3 to the power of positive 2. In expressions like this, the exponent goes to the numerator and to the denominator. So this is equal to 5 squared divided by 3 squared. And that, of course, is equal to 25 divided by 9. So 3 over 5 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 25 over 9. And now here's the last problem, and I think it's certainly the most challenging problem. 16 to the power of negative 3 fourths. Looks pretty gross, but it's not all that bad once we get into it. For starters, let's use our negative exponent rules to rewrite this with a positive exponent. So remember that the rule is a to the power of negative b is equal to 1 divided by a to the power of positive b. So we can rewrite this expression as 1 divided by 16 to the power of 3 divided by 4. Then we have to remember this very cool rule, that x to the power of a divided by b is equal to the bth root of x all to the power of a. So if you have x to the power of a over b, that's equal to the bth root of x to the power of a. So in this case, we have 16 to the power of 3 over 4. So that's going to be equal to the fourth root of 16 all to the power of 3. Let's write it out. So this is equal to 1 divided by the fourth root of 16, and this is all getting cubed. So again, the root is given by our denominator, and the exponent is given by our numerator. And I'm going to rewrite this 4 here, just so we know that this is not 4 times the square root of 16, this is the fourth root of 16, the number that when you raise it to the power of 4, you get 16. Well, I know that 1 to the power of 4 is just equal to 1, so it can't be 1. I know that 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 27, so 3 to the power of 4 is obviously not equal to 16, so I look at 2. 2 to the power of 4 is indeed equal to 16, which means that 2 is the fourth root of 16. So we can rewrite our expression again with that information. So this is equal to 1 divided by 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, so this is just equal to 1 divided by 8. So 16 to the power of negative 3 fourths is equal to 1 divided by 8. So I hope going through all of these problems made you a bit more comfortable with a lot of these exponent rules. Really, all you've got to do is practice a good handful of problems for a little while, and I think you'll find the rules pretty easy to remember. And I have a lot of lessons on the channel about why these exponent rules are true. And I definitely recommend watching those because it's a lot better to understand why the rules are true than it is to just remember them. Because then if you forget them, you can use your understanding to figure out the rule again. For example, if I have 5 to the power of 4 divided by 5 to the power of 3, I don't need to remember that this is equal to 5 to the power of 4 minus 3. I could just write it out. I'd have 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 divided by 5 times 5 times 5, and then I can very easily see that these 5s cancel out, and I'm just left with a single 5. So that's just to drive home the point that if you understand why these rules are true, you don't have to worry about memorizing them at all. But I hope these example problems were helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. See through a big glass jar Abstracting everything Lined in rows of